All right. I'm really excited. Happy 4th of July, everyone. I hope you're all out having barbecues, spending time with your family. And if you can't be with them, call them up, tell them you love them. It's a great country. It's a great place we live, so enjoy it. This last week, we rewiring the airplane, getting my panel in. I'm really excited. I hope you enjoy it. Oshkosh is around the corner. Let's play airplanes. <laughs> I'm halfway done with this panel, but I have destroyed my desktop um, with garbage. I still gotta put, that's a thousand feet of wire. Half of that still needs to go in the plane. I have emptied several spools and made a mess. I'm gonna clean it up and get back to work. I'm using grip lock ties throughout the whole plane, which are awesome. If you haven't seen them, rubber line zip ties, so nothing vibrates or chafes. Get those in your plane, but I'm gonna clean up my mess and then get back to work. <laughs> that would. All right, I'm really excited. I'm finally rewiring the whole aircraft. When I gutted the airplane, I left a couple wires I thought I could use, and I decided, you know what, it's not worth it. Um, the wires I was gonna leave wasn't a Teflon shielded wire, and so even though they may have been okay, I can't stand when my radios have any static or background noise down, down. of anything from interference of any power source. I finished shaking every single wire out of the airplane. We're going every wire replaced with shielded. I'm grounding it, I'll ground the shields and I'll ground every component. But hey, I'm super excited. I got my first light going in, low prestige. Got this, this is the upgrade for airlines and I'm real excited about it. It's going on the underside of the wing. So I'm gonna cut a hole and install it. The first of very many lights going into this aircraft so we can daylight up the back country. I'm excited. Back to work. It's official. Gear legs are painted and I just wired up. The fuel probes are wired, grounded, shielded. And this is going on for the last time. So this stays on till this thing flies. <laughs> Let me tell you about my fuel system real quick. This is really a unique system. This is the pickup line out of my gear leg tank, which has its own fuel sending unit in it. It comes up to a filter. I have three filters on this aircraft. This is a pre-filter to protect my pumps. Normally, you could just go into one of these pumps to run the engine. You see, I've got two. I've got a, a pull-through line in case both my pumps failed. I have check valves built into the head of each pump. So if this pump fails, this pump would run, deadhead check into that pump and still operate. So the reason I've done this, and it is a little overkill, this engine has its own fuel pump on it, engine driven gear pump. And then you have a driving pump that puts fuel to it. The engine can draw through these pumps, so it's not even required. So you could have them both fail. But what I like about this setup is when I'm flying, if you had the electrical pump fail, you only have so many hours you can legally fly on a $4,000 pump that's attached to the motor. And it's because it doesn't like to draw fuel. It can do it, the plane's still safe. You can finish your flight and more, but it cavitates, it pulls bubbles, and it's hard on the gears and they chatter. So the reason I have two pumps here the assembly, the filter, the bracketry, there's most of the weight. This little pump is very lightweight. And what's great is with the way I've got them wired, they both run off their own converter. So if I had a complete electrical converter failure, 24 to 12 volt, the other pump stays running. Converter failures are very rare, but that's the reason. So both of these pumps run on independent converters, independent breakers, and then run tied together with check valves so that the fuel still flows correctly. What's really great about this is I can have multiple stacked failures and this plane will run perfectly. The indication I will have is that the fuel pressure will drop at a standard flow setting of, let's say 28 gallons an hour to 35 gallons an hour, depending on where I've got this pulled back for level flight. The fuel pressure is gonna drop about four PSI. So I will program the Garmin to indicate green 
if both pumps are running only. As soon as any pump fails, either pump fails, mechanical or electrical, the fuel pressure will drop and send off a warning indicator. I can still finish the flight. The plane will be flying the way most planes are fuel pump equipped. I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm really excited about it. So I now know if I have a pump failure, I don't ruin a $4,000 gear driven pump. I fly my flight, land, simply replace an $80 electric pump at my earliest convenience and keep going. I've got trim servos in, tail lights, blinkers, strobes, landing lights, the other landing lights, the nose light. I've got my ELT in, I've rewired and ran my rudder servo, my, my rudder autopilot, my uh, elevator autopilot. Um, I mean, I've got hundreds of wires in here. Pedo system wiring's done, the fuel sending units are done, the I'm down to like little things. I've got like maybe 20% left. Some headsets, all the jacks are ready to go. I've got standard and Bose A&R. Um, I'm, I'm literally down to like maybe 15 hours more work to finish rewiring 100% of this plane, spinner to tail. So I'm excited. This is my workbench, it was organized. I've got all my different ends and terminals and uh, Rolls a wire, but 90% of it's gone. So, as always, I'm excited. It's a good day. So, let me get back to work. A few more harnesses to put in. Maybe by one or two o'clock this morning, tonight, I'll be done. It's uh, not two in the morning. I thought it would be. It's just coming up on midnight. I've got all the wires ran in the entire aircraft up behind the panel, and they're all labeled. I got a lot of zip tying and cleanup work to do. All the harnesses are in, everything's ready to go. All the wiring to the switches. I'm beat, I'm two hours ahead of schedule, so I think I'm gonna jump onto another project tonight, maybe go another hour or two max, get a real early start in the morning and back to work. <laughs> I'm beat. getting there starting to get the trays in I just finished making this little bracket here little bracket at the back lining up all my remote mount components I've got my uh, 24 volt the 12 volt DC converters all mounted in it looks like a mess but it's really organized I have everything labeled and it's going really well I don't even want to say how many more hours I got I'd guess wrong I'm still wiring the plane it's been all day at it, and we're gonna go all into the night. I'm sticking in my battery. This is the battery I made, lithium ion. And the way I've got it done to anchor it for moving is inside it, I've got four sleeves, stainless steel sleeves that carry all the way through the batteries, and it holds the lid down, the battery's in place, and goes all the way through the tray. So I just finished drilling the holes in the, the tray. The bolts will go through the tray, through the top of the battery, and it won't move, but half the weight, twice the power. Like a glove. <laughs> I'm working on the main power wires, picking up my relay box, the starter gen, all the circuitry. My battery is now bolted down. I've got the main terminals tied in. Got about six more large cables to run, two back to the jump start plug-in unit at the back of the plane, and then all the big cables will be done. So four more hours, I'll be done with this. Awesome. <laughs> all right, so we're still wiring up the airplane. Here's a cover plate. I got to put two of them in the back of the plane for the back two seats. We've got oxygen, power port for your phone, and uh, all the different jacks. Here's the wire harness. So I'm going to cut this and stick it right back here. So someone in this seat can reach back and plug in their phone. And likewise, if someone's here, they can plug in there. But the headset jack, the cords will all be behind you and come up in the middle. So I'm gonna cut this out and get it in right now, but we're charging along. 
It's the middle of the night. I'm running solo tonight. My buddy Ron, who always helps me, he's in Lake Powell for a week. It's been solo for a little while. Made a few parts. Kind of proud of this one. Got this done earlier today. Got it installed. I'm running a late night. Right now I'm running uh, the oxygen system. <laughs> I realize I keep looking at the wrong part of the camera. This is where I should look. This is where I keep looking. <laughs> anyway, I got, this is my little home right here, so I'll show it to you. This is the panel, this is what we're working on. I'm actually running the uh, oxygen system right now. This is my little home away from home. I got a little rotating fan right here. Wires are all laid out. I'm gonna put an oxygen tank back there. Uh, it's, I don't even know what time it is, but I got lots of energy, so I'm gonna go all night if I can. Well, probably not all night, but I'm gonna put in a late night. We'll get a lot done. Back to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy. It's been a long week. Uh, I've got the entire panel and all the rest of the wiring of the entire plane done in under seven days. I'm talking front to back. Everything's been redone. I'm down to about the last 50 wires left. And when you have hundreds and hundreds of wires to do, uh, I'm essentially done. So I'll give you a little quick tour of the panel. I've got a little Garmin backup display with its own built up built in battery. I got G3X touch right here. Here's my lights, my pedo heat. Lights here, more lights here. Um, if I come clear over here, this is really cool. I got floor camera. This does night vision. So I've got a night vision camera coming out of the wing. And if I go to the back, that turns on a tail cam so I can see behind me if I'm in the back country and I wanna back up into the trees or something and get turned around, I'll be able to see. And if I go to center, that runs to a jack so I can plug in another uh, video audio input and watch a movie or something. So that's all done, uh, wired up. The other, the third screen is a G3X touch. So that's what's displaying everything. Down here, I've got four place oxygen. I've got a built-in O2 sensor. So uh, obviously oxygen in a bush plane is not very common, but I've got massive tanks on board. This is, will go to 28,000 feet, so I put oxygen on it. Anyway, I've got a little bit left to do. Let me just go ahead and show you kind of some of the cleanup items I gotta do, one of which is these fuel probes. They're now wired. I've gotta plumb them in line. Let me show you how they work. I've got capacitive probes in my wings and my gear legs. And when my wings go empty, I wanna know when that fuel is coming down the line that feeds from the wing to the gear legs. And I wanna know exactly when that wing is bone dry. And that's what this is gonna do. So if you look on my dash, you see here, wing fuel empty, left and right. And I can just dip these in this water and simulate how this works. And what that allows me to do is to know, when I get to my gear legs only, I'm at 45 minute reserve, which is perfect. The center of gravity is low and it's exactly legal minimums uh, for nighttime. So. What I'm, what I'm able to do is just have this bright light go off that says, hey, your wing really is bone dry and you know exactly what's in the gear tanks and they do have uh, meters on them. It displayed right here, quantity, those are wings, those are gear. So I got four capacitive sensors and I got to get those calibrated still. But it's really a, a nice fail safe to see those lights kick off and on and and know that, hey, I'm on reserve now and I better be in the pattern of an airport somewhere or really close to it because I'm on the last 45 minutes. So I gotta get these hooked up. So what I'm gonna quickly go do, I tried to do it with some different various fittings and get it in line. Usually goes in the side of a tank. So I've got a machine something. I'm gonna go draw something up real quick that I can plug in and then the fuel can come in, pass through it and continue without being disrupted by the trigger. I'll put that midline. So I'm gonna go machine that real quick and then I'll install it and this will be done. <laughs> I'm getting really close. Let's get this project finished. All right, I just got back from the machine shop. This is the part I needed to make. It's got very large lines where the fuel is gonna pass through a 90 and this is just gonna stick in the corner. So I've opened up the inside of this a lot so that this can thread into it. And now I have an unobstructed pass through and my ultrasonic sensor trigger is right in line of that fuel. So I have no flow loss and the sensor's ready to go. So let's go install them. Okay, everyone, I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of stuff, so I added a little extra video we'll put in just making a simple little part. If you want to see a little part made, go check it out. 
Go back, watch some of the old videos if you haven't. I hope you enjoy it. I got so much to do. I'm going back to work. <laughs>